All right, everybody, welcome back to Mustangs by Matt. Today we're working on the EcoBoost again. Just got this TurboSmart internal wastegate actuator in from Tune Plus. It's their own proprietary spring set that's in here, so I don't know what kind of magic Adam managed to work, but a lot of people seem to like it, and I'm really excited for it. I've seen the, I've seen the gains. I've talked to a lot of people. It's a fairly simple install. It's two bolts and then a, uh, a clip nut of some kind and a uh, vacuum line. So let's get started. So these are the tools you're going to need to do the job. Probably a 3 8 ratchet, definitely a quarter inch ratchet, a couple of extensions, 13 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket, a couple of quarter inch drive extensions as well, a uh, pair of duck bills or needle nose pliers of some kind to get the sir clip off of the actuator rod in there, some red thread locker, always good to use. 10 millimeter clicky wrench to get the nuts off the back side of the factory actuator. A Cobb access port updated with the Tune from Tune Plus. And gloves and a shop towel are always good to have. Alright, so what we're looking at here is the top of the heat shield on the Mustang, the 2019, 2018 to 2020 Mustang EcoBoost. And we're gonna just pop these nuts off real quick there is a down here I'll show you that in a second there's a 10 millimeter bolt okay so on the 15 to 17 Mustangs you would see right here quite a large um, NVH Bra uh, bracket of some kind, some kind of bushing, I'm not sure. Uh, they removed that on the 18 to 20 EcoBoost. So if you got an 18 to 20, you don't have to worry about that. If you have a 15 to 17, I believe it's a 10 millimeter bolt. I will annotate it if that is not correct. <laughs> oh. Alright, we're going to zoom out the other way. That's what I had to do to this thing. But it is not just one sheet of metal, it's multi-layer, it's heat insulating. So we're gonna try and get this back on. There's where that other bolt went. So we're gonna put this to the side and keep going. This is that vacuum line that I was telling you about. Clip it, slide it back, and there it goes. And now we're going to move over. Hey. Oh, wow. I really thought these were bolts. All right, everybody, I'm going to make this wastegate disappear. It's gone. So we've got the old wastegate out. We're ready to install the new one. This is the critical part of this installation is getting the rod length just right. So we're going to install it. We're going to set the rod length when, it, when the wastegate is closed. Then we're going to remove it. We're going to shorten this a predetermined amount that I'm going to list right here because I've forgotten it at the moment, which is about four full rotations. So that's what we don't want it to do. So we got to get it up. And we're just going to secure this zip tie. So we're just going to install. Temporarily, very temporarily, one of these nuts to hold the actuator 
in position as much as we can. Now we're going to set the length. And we'll Okay, that fits. Pull the actuator back out. All right, so we've got this actuator rod set up the way that it is supposed to be in the car, but what we need to do now is set the preload. According to Adam and Tune Plus, that's three millimeters shortened. So we take our 7 sixteenths and loosen this nut. All right, and we'll just slide that down. And we'll measure one eighth of an inch, which is about three millimeters, okay, from our starting point to three, This is normally a pretty difficult installation, but I'm going to show you a trick that if you have this tool, will make it a lot easier. So let's go take a look. So what I've got here is an air compressor and a, uh, I don't know, whatever you call this thing. So it comes with this little rubber adapter on it so that it will shoot the air into a more fine area. So what I'm gonna do is show you that if you have this, when you when you get ready to install it, slide it on, get the nuts tight, put the air right here, not too much. I've got this set to about 20 PSI, or 20, 25 PSI, okay? So just watch this. And it just makes it so much easier to install on the car. It doesn't do any damage. This is designed to have air pressure pushing on it. That's what this whole system is for. So, if you have an air compressor, you know, try to use it. Um, if you don't, you're just gonna have to grip on here with a pair of pliers and pull for everything you're worth because it is very, very stiff. All right, so we've got the got the rod for the wastegate actuator shortened the correct amount. We have the ability to extend it so that it makes it e the install just a little bit easier. Now we're going to put everything together and hope it works just the way we want it to. I'm going to put a dab of red Loctite on there. Okay, so we've had a minor setback. A um, couple things happened when I was installing this with the washer, the lock washer that I was using with the, the new nut, uh, fell down into the bowels of the engine bay. And while I was trying to retrieve that, something else broke. My uh, air nozzle had a little rubber tip on here. Uh, it decided to fly off into the engine bay and is now gone forever. So, what do we do? We regroup and we start again. The factory nuts that came with the original wastegate actuator are the exact same pitch and thread count on the new one as they are on the uh, on the original actuator. So we're going to reuse the factory nuts. They, they probably would have held on there for as long as the car was running, so I'm happy to reuse them. I leave my mistakes in my videos because it's important to see that no matter who you are, you can screw up. I screwed up twice in rapid succession. Um, but 
the important thing is that you don't give up, you regroup, you come again, and you fix the problem as best you can, or you work around it. So we're going to keep going. All right, so let's keep going. We're going to install this down here, and you've got the benefit of the secondary cam, so you can see. I hope. All right, I managed not to drop anything. So, it's very important that you click this twice to activate it, otherwise it won't work. I don't know if there's a torque setting for these bolts, but good and tight ought to work. I just don't want this thing to come apart when I'm going down the road at a reasonable speed. So we're going to just insert, insert this right here. Now we've got the we've got the other end coming out. And we've already cleared this to make sure that there is nothing in the pipe or nothing in the tube here. And now we're going to put the air in, and we're going to extend that uh, that arm. It's just that simple. <laughs> hey. Now that we've got the actuator onto the wastegate, we're going to remove the zip tie we installed earlier. There we go. And we're ready to install the circlet. Now, what happened earlier, I dropped the washer and then I dropped another piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this uh, soak up pad. It's really big um, and it's got a lot of these catchy little fibers here. So we're just going to just slip this down here. Okay, under the wastegate so that hopefully if we drop the circlip uh, it'll go onto that soak up pad and we won't lose it. I'm sorry viewers at home if you're expecting something other than a fiddly mess. But, let's see here. Alright, so what we're going to do is just reinstall that. Alright. And then we'll move this back onto here. We need to reinstall uh, this heat shield, which includes the two upper nuts for the exhaust manifold. Um, so uh, this is a very, very tedious process, and I'm not going to make you suffer through it. Just know that it probably should be done. Two hours later. All right, so I've got the... Uh, exhaust manifold heat shield reinstalled. Now we have to tighten the nuts on the heat shield. So the torque spec for this is 95 foot pounds. Here's our torque wrench. Set to 95. The UPS truck and the driver. Hey! UPS man! So while we were filming the torque sequence on the exhaust manifold, the uh, UPS guy showed up with this little plug from Velocitech, and it is a plug for the uh, intake resonator. What this thing does is quieten down the intake so anything full throttle, any over 3000 RPM, whatever, you can't really hear and it quiets down the intake. This is great for uh, a rental car, but not so great for a car where you want to hear the intake. So we're going to be installing this later. Uh, get subscribed because you're not going to want to miss it. Alright, so the torque on these is 95 foot pounds.
done. Now we tighten down a little eight millimeter bolt from earlier. All right, so now what we're gonna do is load the tune into the car and fire it up, see what happens. So we're gonna load the tune, gotta turn the car, turn the ignition on. Tune, change map, select Tune Plus 93IWG, go ahead and click yes and it'll take you through some prompts and then it'll load the tune. Alright, so change map successful, please turn off the ignition key, we're going to do that, wait 15 seconds, we're going to do 30. Everything's been set up. Uh, the car is happy. Uh, we're gonna do a test fire and see if anything blows up. Fire in the hole! Alright everybody, so that's the install of the Tune Plus internal wastegate actuator on the EcoBoost Mustang. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and do all those things. If you're looking for something else to watch, I've got uh, videos on my channel of uh, Mustang GTs, Fiestas, uh, all kinds of things. So there's something for everybody. If you have a, a suggestion for a future video, something you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments section down below. And with that out of the way, drive safe, have fun, and God bless America. 30 seconds. I've made the mistake one time of uh, forgetting to wait the 15 seconds. So I just started the car, and everything went haywire. Nothing was working correctly. The ignition timing wasn't correct. It was after firing and, and ignition and all over the place. It was crazy. All right. All right. All right. Everything's working.